Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology at the University of Ottawa. Um, this is a third video in my series on global heat waves to Arctic monsoons. So I'm basically talking about the ENSO, the El Nino, La Nina. And the reason why this is important is because this is global surface temperature. If we have a strong El Nino, super El Nino, as we did in 1998 and 2016, that spikes up global temperatures significantly. So you would expect that massive heat waves around the globe would be exacerbated, made much worse during El Ninos. Unfortunately, we're seeing these massive global heat waves in 2018 and the there's no El Nino there's no La Nina we're right here in fact okay we we had a basically almost a La Nina condition here you know here a bit and here a bit but we're not you know and the temperatures have shifted up a little bit above zero but we're nowhere near an El Nino at the moment this is the strong El Nino that we had the super El Nino uh, in uh, 2016, okay, late 2015, 2016. This is the previous very powerful one um, in 1998, okay. Um, the value, the, recent, the most recent ONI value is minus 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. So we're just here, right? So we're not, the problem is, is we're having all these global heat waves and the ramifications are spiraling up and we're, we're in a neutral state. Now we're expected to go to another El Nino uh, with, uh, with a, uh, let's get down here. I think it's a 65% chance. Um, this is the, this is a very useful thing. If you wanna learn about what's going on with these, the predictions and so on. Um, what I do wanna show you is just the conclusions here. Talks about the ramification. Okay, so right now we're neutral. Okay, we're slightly near to slightly above average. And 65% in the fall, chance in the fall that we'll get an El Nino, 70% during the winter. Okay, so again, the problem is, is that we're getting these global heat waves right now um, and drought with huge effects on crops and we're not even in an El Nino year. Okay, so this is a good standby climate reanalyzer. Okay, so you can see there's a ridge here. This will be a ridge, so the jet stream will come here. It'll come down here. It'll come back up here in a ridge and so on. You can kind of track it around where it would be. You can display it here by jet stream wind speed here. Okay, so you can see the dip here, and you can see the associated... Um, the associated pattern here. If we look at the geopotential height, you can see this is where, where the jet stream would track. Okay, um, but that's a good standby. Uh, you know, it's always good to have a look at that and you just click on here to see what's going on. So this is uh, two meter temperatures, but the anomalies, so warmth in Africa, look at the heat wave up here, right, right up into the far Arctic in Scandinavian countries, Novaya Zemla, Siberia, Okay, also heat waves down here um, in China. And, uh, you know, uh, so you can click to get the different views. We're also seeing uh, large anomalies. Look at this down here. So we'd have, remember the jet stream, the idea of ridges and troughs is inverted because we're in the Southern Hemisphere. So the, if the jet stream is coming up here, it's bringing the cold's coming there, and this would be, so this is, uh, you know, it looks like a ridge, but we're upside down, so it's really a trough compared to, you know, it's uh, like a northern hemisphere, you know, we call them ridges and troughs, but you have to kind of invert your thinking a bit. So that here, you know, the jet stream would come fairly far south, so that would be a southerly ridge extending farther to the pole here. And uh, here, Australia. So it's winter there, but we're still getting the drought condition. So this is very, very different. Look at the swings here. I mean, this is 20, 30 degrees warmer than normal, down to minus 20, colder than normal, and the proximity where it's close together, you'll have very high winds, etc. 
Okay, uh, we always have to talk about sea ice because that's a root cause. The, the change in the Arctic, the Arctic temperature amplification is monkeying with the circulation systems, the air and ocean movements in the, on the entire planet. So if we look at the sea ice, um, you know, concentration, it's like, okay, well, it looks like there's quite a bit there. You know, like sea ice extent, it's defined as the area of ocean with at least 15% sea ice. You know, it's not record low, like in 2012, okay? Um, but it's really the thickness and really the ball, which, you know, multiplied by the area, and uh, you get what's going on. Temperatures, you know, it's close to, close to a uh, melting point of, of the sea ice because all this energy up there, even though it's much warmer, you know, that energy is going into melting ice. The problem is, is when that ice is gone, that energy will spike up the temperatures. And this curve here will rocket upwards when there's no sea ice. Okay, the anomalies will be huge. They'll, they'll be enormous and, and gaining until we get no sea ice year round. So I like looking at, this is the ice speed and drift. So there's a, there's a strong uh, cyclone spinning around here, a low pressure area air is coming in around, doing looping to the right because of Coriolis force, and we get this uh, circulation pattern here, which mixes and churns the very thin ice. There's almost no two meter ice left in the Arctic. And I can show you that here. If I go down here and I click on this, click on, where did it go? Right here, click on this, and I've actually done that and bring you this. Okay, so this is the Arctic snapshot. So I'm gonna click on the GIF here, okay, which I can do here, and here it's running. This is the last 30 days, 2018, 07, 01 to the end of the month. So, you know, we're on the 23rd, I believe, so there's about a week forecast in here. Look at the two meter sea ice here. It's all, go it's all, it all disappears. See this two meter stuff? Disappears. So all the ice is, uh, we're below here. Okay, the blue is uh, one meter, purples are less than a meter, half a meter, basically. So there's no thick ice left. There's no multi-year ice left in, in the Arctic. The only two meter stuff is down here by the Canadian archipelago and it gets stuck in, in, in these regions. So how does this compare to previous years? Okay, so, well, I don't want to reinvent the wheel, so Patrick uh, McNulty um, posted some images on, on Facebook. So this is the Arctic ice sickness 2012, July 22nd, 2012. Okay, so we've got thick ice. We've got five meter thick ice here, four and a half meters, four meters, three and a half, three meters. Okay, and then we get to the two meter stuff. Well, here's what we had then. And then six years later, here's what we have now. How is this not a climate emergency? How is this stuff not gonna, this stuff is gonna disappear in the blink of an eye. And the, we're gonna have a, we're probably gonna have a global food shortage when this happens. And we're in a climate change emergency. Come on, governments and politicians, uh, they need to get their act together. They're not fulfilling their mandate of keeping the public uh, safe. That's one of the things that governments are supposed to do, right? So, you know, look at this. This is striking. The ice is going. Okay, so now what's with these Arctic monsoons? Who's heard of an Arctic monsoon? So let's remind you of what a monsoon is. Okay, so just go to Google. I went to Google Images. I just put in monsoons and you get all these things on on monsoon. So here is uh, the most well-known monsoon is in the summer in India, the land is super warm. The oceans are still colder than the land. So that super warm air for that entire season for se months and months, doesn't drop much during night. The air rises, it creates a low pressure area over India. So the air comes from the ocean, it's laden with uh, moisture, water vapor that's evaporated from the ocean, and you get these torrential rains over India during the monsoon season. 
During the winter, the cycle reverses. The land cools quicker than the ocean. The land is colder. The air, the ocean's warmer. The air rises over the ocean, creates a low pressure over the ocean, and that sucks the air from India offshore. So this is monsoon off, monsoon on. Okay. So let's go here now. So here's another view of the monsoon. Okay. This is a site um, all about monsoons. Okay, um, it's one of those sites I just clicked on the image in the Google Images for monsoons and it brought me to the, the source page. So here's we get the summer case. The land is very hot, low, the air rises convectively. Low pressures at the surface, that straws in air from over the ocean, that air rises. Water vapor condenses, clouds and stuff, uh, lots of rain. And then you get the cycle completed here. So high pressure cooler ocean, low pressure hot land. And then in the winter, the land is cooler, the air, the, the water is warmer, the air rises over the water, and you get these offshore breezes here and onshore breezes here. This is the whole concept of the monsoon. Okay, well, this is what the Europeans are forecasting for, it's hard to tell here, but this is uh, Norway, Norway's right here, Scandinavia here, uh, Russia, and so on. Okay, Novaya Zemla. This, look at this huge dome. This is a 500 millibar, about halfway up the atmosphere. This is the anomaly. Um, so we're getting here. Um, this is uh, 588 millibar, 500. So the anomaly, 588. Okay, so it's 500 millibar. So there's huge, huge anomaly here. Um, Okay, hot air rises, that air rises, this is your heat dome. Okay, you can see it right up through the atmosphere. So what happens to, the, you know, this will last for, this is from July 27th to August 1st forecasted. What's gonna happen here is this will be set up and if you happen to, uh, okay, the air is rising, that'll suck in air from outside Okay, if there's a lot of water vapor in it, that will be thrust up and you get a monsoon type condition. Now, because the Arctic Ocean, there's still sea ice on it, there's still colder water, um, you might, like, you, you, you may not real, you might get heavy rains, but it's not really a monsoon yet. But as the Arctic Ocean warms more and there's more wa evaporation and more water vapor put up into the air over the Arctic, then we will fully expect you know, as the jet streams break down completely and, and we're, the jet streams don't win. They don't, they don't uh, rule climate. They don't rule weather patterns. What rules will be, be the land ocean contrast. And unfortunately that doesn't change, right? It doesn't, I mean, the land doesn't move, the ocean doesn't move. So we'll get these patterns set up. So remember those huge snowfalls on the East coast of the US? You know, we had warm ocean, we had cold land, and uh, this was in the fall, early winter, and we got huge, huge snowfalls. And that water stayed warm throughout the winter, so we got huge, huge snowfalls, massive snow dumps. Um, same sort of, you know, Japan recently. Incredible heat waves, incredible torrential rains. Monsoons, torrential rains, Arctic monsoon, we're coming, it's close. Okay, um, I, ta I, I talked about crops stresses on crops and photosynthesis. So temperature, there's an optimum temperature for photosynthesis. Okay, the, there's more, like when the temperature rises, the kinetic energy increases of molecules. So reactions can occur more quickly, chemical reactions, and you get a, a gain in rate of photosynthesis, but you reach a certain temperature, the enzymes start breaking down, boom, the thing drops. And this is uh, with light, more and more light, more photosynthesis, but you re it's not a limiting factor, so you get a plateau. And this is, uh, so this is interesting here. So this is showing for a particular enzyme, you know, here we go and get an optimum temperature. So next time, you know, next time, if you have a, a good temperature probe and you're frying an egg, look at the temperature when that egg white starts changing because those pr protein molecules are denaturing and breaking down. Um, CO2 levels. These global heat waves definitely reduce the CO2 sink, so we would expect very, very high CO2 levels. Also is another problem. Okay, so I'll, I'll finish off here. So, 
So basically, we're undergoing, these global heat waves are leading to Arctic monsoons. Thank you.